in Sweden too, a big, sparsely populated country at the very top end of Northern Europe, legislation allowing combinations up to 24 metres or 78 feet meant that enterprising truckers quickly adopted dromedary tractors in order not to waste valuable load space when hauling regular semi-trailers. The earliest examples from the late 1970s and early 1980s were installed on long wheelbase 6x2 Scania and Volvo tractor units. In Swedish terminology, the load area is generally known as a rucksack, although the term drom is used. In the 1970s, the tall Ford transcontinental cab over, imported from Britain, but featuring a Cummins, Fuller, Rockwell driveline, was a popular choice as a drom box unit. In fact, it would appear that many of the Ford Transcon tractors used by Swedish operators ended up as drom or rucksack tractors. These were designated as the 5235 model, signifying a 52 ton gross combination weight and Cummins 350 for power. The dual purpose drum combination operated by Olsons of Schervde and at one time contracted to the Volvo engine plant is certainly the most unusual drum we have ever seen. The tanks carry sand used in the foundry while the boxes haul out completed engine blocks. This combination illustrates the optimum use of equipment and exploits the legislation to the maximum. While length limits have remained almost unchanged in Sweden since the 1970s, maximum weights have increased from 52 to 60 metric tonnes. This in turn has resulted in a change in some instances from three to four axle drum tractor units in order to cope with the slightly higher imposed loads. However, because most trucks and tractors in Sweden employ single drive, these new style drum units are primarily single screw with a lifting rear tag axle. The special technique you need to have is you have to, to uh, if you're going to make a right turn, you got to stay in the middle of the street because when you, when you start to turn, the back is not steering with you, it's just doing this. So if you're not going out, you're going to take uh, whatever is in the way with you. Of course. So that you have to, to remember. But when you've uh, done it sometimes, it's not, uh, you're not thinking of it, but you have to do it. with only one uh, axle, yes. but still uh, it's the same uh, combination. But this long one, I got uh, the new one at uh, 93. And I have that one for seven years. And then I get this one, so I have it almost three years now. The box is inside 365, so you can put nine pallets in it. And it's uh, three meter high and 255 on the, the other side. And uh, to totally the old truck is 4 meter 46 centimeters. So you have to watch out because in Sweden you have 450, and that's yeah, yeah. And that it's not every, everywhere there's 450, and then you wake up. I go no every day on the, to up to Scania in Salotelia, and I have the whole uh, truck with the uh, car parts to Scania, and I uh, deliver them. And in the afternoon, I load uh, engines for the factory uh, at Skåne in Svolle. What is the advantage of the uh, rucksack combination the, the, the over? The advantage of the rucksack is that 
if you take this truck without the, the rucksack, uh, then you lose this 10 tons up. And it's it's uh, it's uh, cost a little more to drive this combination. But if you can uh, load it, it's you don't have to drive that much kilometers. You can drive less kilometers and have lots of goods with you. So the kilometers cost to drive. So it's better to drive less. And when you drive, you take as much as you can with you. Because of the high capital cost of a dromedary tractor, it is important that operators get the best possible use out of it, and for this reason many are double shifted, with driver changeovers taking place at pre-arranged locations such as truck stops or rest areas. This type of operation is often restricted, however, to larger operators with a broad customer base and regular collections and deliveries, or perhaps to small specialist companies offering a highly personalised service. Other companies, not able to fully exploit the advantages offered by the DROM idea, concentrate instead on time-sensitive freight, and DROMs are regularly employed by organisations such as the Swedish Post Office, which demands precise scheduling and reliability. The OP Trans Drom box is loaded with urgent mail at the busy Malmo post office prior to starting its nightly run to areas in south central Sweden. Hansons Akeri, based in Lundby Head, employ a large fleet of Volvo and Scania tractor units several of which are equipped with a drum box, and these units are often double shifted. In such instances, the drum is quickly unloaded and coupled to another trailer prior to heading out again for the night run. And, as usual, there is never quite enough time, and the pressure inevitably falls on the driver. Volvo and Scania, two of the world's leading truck builders, are based in Sweden and these influential manufacturers with a reputation for first-class parts availability are also regular customers of DROM tractors, the DROM box being reserved exclusively for urgently needed spares. Using the DROM area for their express freight means that it can be located quickly and easily and that unloading can be carried out before discharging the trailer has even started. In extreme cases, the tractor unit can drop its trailer and press on to deliver the cargo itself, thereby eliminating the need to try and ship and also cutting back on overall delivery times. Mind you, heading off to a distant destination on roads that are almost deserted on a fine summer evening has got to be more pleasant than battling along a busy motorway or interstate highway. And with 460 horsepower on tap and a quiet and comfortable long wheelbase tractor unit under your rear end, the job could almost certainly be a lot worse. It would be interesting to see how Dave Hiscox cope with a modern European cab over after a lifetime of driving his 1965 Cracker Box. Most freight, 
moved by road within Sweden itself, is hauled aboard truck trailer outfits measuring up to 24 metres long and grossing 60 metric tonnes. Unlike North America, where the tractor trailer is the preferred configuration, in Sweden the truck trailer has evolved as the most commonly used outfit. For this reason, tractor trailer combinations are not nearly as frequently used as elsewhere in Europe, where overall sizes and weights are generally much lower. Consequently, tractor trailers are generally found either in fleets serving mainland Europe as well as the domestic market or in a certain specific geographic region. While drum tractors coupled to a standard 13.6 metre long semi-trailer seldom measure more than 22 metres overall and therefore fall comfortably inside the 24 metres permitted, they are nevertheless impressive outfits. Southern Sweden is home to many drum combinations because this is where truck operators wishing to run south into mainland Europe are most likely to locate. It is also an area that sees many unaccompanied semi-trailers arriving by sea from neighbouring countries such as Germany and Denmark. What is noticeable is the ease with which the big drum boxes may be accessed, many being equipped with double doors on one side and an intriguing drop-side curtain on the other. Swedish truck and component builders have always believed in making life as simple as possible for the operator or driver. For P Transport, based in Helsingborg, favour the Scania mark and their operation also involves a lot of night work with tractors heading to and from the Scania plant at Soditalia near Stockholm on a regular basis. The company employs three and four axle drums but their immaculate 8x2 tractors turn heads wherever they are seen and drivers love the power and performance of the big Scania V8 diesel. What is thought to be the only drum tractor still working in Britain, apart from fairground or showman's vehicles, is this Volvo FH12 operated by Gander Foster. The vehicle was designed um, between Tom Foster and myself. It's to take the excess bitumen off the roads using high pressure water. We run at about 25,000 psi, uh, 1600 bar. We vacuum it up as we go along. Uh, the idea is to make the roads more skid resistant. It's a cheap alternative to surface dressing and obviously to resurfacing. The same vehicle also takes rubber off runways which is pretty uh, important these days. Um, it's based on a Volvo 420 uh, 6x2 sleeper cab. It's left hand drive for safety reasons. Uh, bearing in mind what we had to do with the machine uh, we couldn't buy the ideal tractor unit so we decided to buy a 6x2. We stretched it by two metres or we had it stretched by a company called Chassis Developments in uh, Walsall in the Midlands who made an extremely good job of it. They also put a second steer axle on it to take some of the loading off the front axle, which um, would have been about 11 tonnes, so we put the second steer axle on. Um, the equipment on the back comprises a 630 horsepower Cummins engine, which has the latest technology. Um, that operates water pumps and also the hydraulic circuits, which drive the suction system and all the rotary joints and all the tipping gear on the trailer. Other notable drum tractors used in Britain over the years include the Atkinson Leader Twin Steer Salt Sphere Tankers operated in the colours of ICI and the imposing Foden eight-wheel tractors employed as aircraft refuelers at London's Heathrow Airport. In a literal interpretation of the term, the Foden twin load vehicles produced in Britain in the late 1960s to circumvent legislation and increase payloads could be classified as DROMs in that they did have a load area behind the cab and a head of the fifth wheel. Indeed, a periodical of that period commented that one interesting machine offered by Foden is the twin load, a dromedary style load carrying eight wheeler coupled to a small single axle semi-trailer. 
however, because these combinations were expressly designed to operate primarily as a rigid eight-wheeler hauling a trailer, the term DROM seems largely inappropriate in this instance. Nevertheless, these highly unusual vehicles with tank and curtain side of bodywork made a welcome addition to the British truck scene, and the ear-splitting sound of a Mark 7 Foden 225 horsepower two-stroke diesel driven through the Foden 12-speed gearbox was certainly not easily forgotten. A more recent example is the 1970s Volvo F88 240, owned by Tony Millard of Bristol, who used the drum box as living accommodation. In Canada, one of the best-known drop operators is Manitoulin Transport, whose long wheelbase freight liner and Peterbilt tractor units are a familiar sight on the country's highways. More than 160 drivers work at the Sudbury, Ontario depot, and we caught up with driver Dan Tompkins as he was coupling up to his brand new Argosy prior to heading out on his run. My name is uh, Dan Tompkins, I'm 29 years of age and I've been driving transport uh, now for six years. I really enjoy it. Um, parts of the job I like are, you know, I, I get to see uh, Canada, right across Canada. And not too many people my age can say they, they've done that. It's a good run, we run uh, down to Toronto on Friday afternoons. We pick up a, a Toronto trailer and then we uh, head out uh, as far as Vancouver. Uh, British Columbia. We uh, also have a, a stop in uh, Edmonton, one in Calgary, Winnipeg. We, uh, we do it all. <laughs> Manitoulin is justifiably proud of its safety program and its safety record. Canada is a big country with lots of wide open spaces and little traffic. But despite this, speeds are not excessive. The speed limit out here on the highway is uh, 100 kilometers an hour. Uh, Manitoulin and Rules, they, uh, they want all their drivers to maintain a, a maximum speed of 90 kilometers an hour. It ensures you know, a bit more safety. Um, we don't get a, we're, not, we're never accused of speeding or, or crowding the highway. Uh, when, you're, when you are the biggest trucks out on the road, you, know, you have to share the responsibility of making sure that everyone stays safe. driving conditions these are the you know I prefer to drive a, a super truck myself because of the long wheelbase and uh, you, you know you do have weight in the drone box itself and it adds onto your drive tires giving you that extra traction well when I was when I was working for the moving company um, there was some owner operators that had the drone box uh, set up and they'd use it uh, you know some would use it for living accommodations they'd actually turn the drone box into a, a camper style uh, I had a friend uh, from out west, he used his drone box to transport his Harley Davidson and uh, this, he has a side door on his drone box and when he wasn't able to deliver the customer's furniture that morning he would uh, you know, just take out his Harley Davidson and cruise around town for something to do. The latest four axle Argosy tractors feature a 14,600 pound front axle, an 18,000 pound lift steer and 46,000 pound rears. Power is provided by a C12 CAT and transmission is an Eaton 13 speed. Drum boxes measure 16 feet overall length. Manitoulin first started drum operations in the late 1970s and as such were relative latecomers to the concept. However, the system proved ideal for their operations and the freight system went on to be tailored around that idea. While summertime temperatures can be blisteringly hot, Ontario's winters can be cruelly cold, so the Manitoulin drum boxes are both insulated and fitted with heaters, thus preventing freight from freezing while in transit. Evidence of the value placed upon the dromedary tractor unit and the concept 
can be seen at many of the Manitoulin depots around the country, where the bays are structured in such a way that the tractor unit and the fifth wheel can be reversed underneath so that the drum box can get right up against the loading dock. In addition to its Freightliner and Argosy drum tractors, Manitoulin also used several Peterbilts. The most interesting of these is the remarkable six-axle 362 cab over, measuring almost 40 feet long and featuring a very large drum tank. The unit is unique in the world of drum units in that in order to support the weight of the tank and the imposed load from the semi-trailer, it rides on two steering axles, two lift axles and two driving axles. Employed primarily on the hauls out of Toronto and Sudbury, the big tractor transports fuel and lightweight LTL freight northbound and bulk goods such as dressed lumber on the southbound leg. Manitoulin drums are always referred to by employees and drivers alike as super trucks and the term is certainly appropriate in this instance. Another interesting Ontario based drum is this freight liner operated by Tudhope Cartage of Paris Sound. Coupled to a four axle semi trailer the complete outfit is equipped with single wheels and tyres and is designed to be as light yet as durable as possible. In fact, the outfit carries more than an 8-axle B-train combination and is cheaper to maintain. Two such outfits operate in the Toronto area of southern Ontario, Canada. In the vast open spaces of Western Australia, legislation has always favoured the use of tractor units using tandem steer axles, even those engaged in road train operations. The additional load capacity available, coupled with the opportunity to utilise a long wheelbase, meant that the twin steer tractors were ideally set up for drum operation, and consequently many of these were used during the past 30 years or so at the front end of two or even three trailer road trains. Milk tanker operators in particular have favoured the use of drums in Western Australia and in Kewdale, a suburb of Perth, Masters Dairies used four axle Foden and Atkinson drum tanks in their operation. The very latest examples of dromedary tractor units used in Western Australia are true leviathans capable of grossing up to as much as 177 tonnes. One current example is the Westside Logistics Kenworth cab over, featuring a 550 horsepower cat diesel and a tri-drive bogey using Sisu hub reduction drive axles. This outfit is capable of hauling 145,000 litres of diesel fuel in the four Timon trailer tanks and a further 6,000 litres in the dromedary tank. When asked about the job of piloting the massive Westside rig, driver Chris had this to say. Um, yeah, it's a um, good job, good company to work for. And, um, yeah, I've driven them just, you know, just about as big before. And what's the best feature of the combination? Mm, oh, you can't go past the Caterpillar engine, I don't think. It's, um, yeah, very reliable. Yeah. And what about the special skills required for driving this rig? A lot of experience. Before you get up to something this big, it's not something you can just um, jump into and with no road train experience and expect to be you know, safe. Yeah. On. And when you're out there on the highway, how do four trailers and 177 tonnes handle? Yes, you've got to watch road conditions, especially rough roads. They do tend to, if you get a bit of movement in the front of the truck by the time it gets 53 and a half metres down the back it tends to get a lot of movement. And can... What do you reckon are the best and worst parts of this job? The pay is the best. <laughs> the wages. <laughs> um, oh the worst is um, we work the truck 24 hours a day around the clock so and live away from home, live in Mount Magnet or stay in Mount Magnet or I live in Geraldton so you're away you know, 12 days of the fortnight. It's a huge outfit and a huge responsibility what are your biggest concerns out on the road? Other road users. It's, um, yeah, some people just don't think a vehicle this side, you know, stopping, stopping distances and uh, turning circles. Uh, a lot of people just don't understand the, 
the amount of lack of manoeuvrability and stopping power these things have got. If you had a wish list, how could the outfit be improved? The truck would have a bonnet on it. <laughs> but then it wouldn't be in the length, legal length. Yeah, for Fish sure, yeah, for sure. Yeah. A lot smoother ride, um, not feel a lot safer, you're not sitting over the top of the front of it, you know? Yeah. Thanks, Chris, and take it easy, mate. No worries. <laughs> Meanwhile, during the 1970s, one Western Australian operator used what is believed to be the only example of a side-tipping grain box on a four-axle drum tractor, this being an Australian-built version of the British Atkinson with a cab developed by International Harvester, who owned Atkinson at that time. This tractor was used at the front end of a grain-carrying two-trailer road train and caused considerable interest amongst other drivers wherever it went. What can only be described as a close relative of the 1970s Atkinson grain carrying drums are the ore carrying 10x6 tractors currently operated by G. Archie Brothers of Perth. Featuring tri-drive hub reduction axles and capable of grossing 154 tonnes, the Volvo F8 series tractor units are used to haul four trailers in a double B-double configuration and carry one demountable pod, known as a kibble, ahead of the fifth wheel. It's not a side tipper admittedly, but it's as close as it gets to the original idea, albeit on a much bigger scale. These combinations are used on a regular run, falling between the Scuttles mine near Yalgu and the port of Geraldton. They were set up originally as body trucks hauling double B double trailer sets, but the dromedary tractor concept proved more stable and more productive and has been adopted for all the Giachi double B double operations. <laughs>